All right. What are we getting into next? Oh, let's go. New segment. Delivery Diaries. Today is presented by Ovation. This is like a super segment here, guys. We're taking guest experience, Zach's and Ovation's usual segment, bringing it together with Delivery Diaries. Delivery has become so big it needs its own segment. It has an entire yeah. ecosystem. We've talked about the guest experience, the driver experience, the restaurant operator staff experience, the business model. So we realized we need to talk about this in depth in a segment. So we're going to get into, into delivery diaries. And so thanks to Ovation for kind of sparking this. Again, they're at the RMDA, the Restaurant Marketing Delivery Association. This is a nonprofit putting on this, who's again, kind of all in this ecosystem. So we are going to hear from, uh, from Zach and Sean in a moment, but real quick, everyone. Ovation is a two-question survey platform for real-time feedback, better online reviews, and happier guests. And let's see what... Uh, what Give the Riff audience what they need to know about hey, delivery. If you want incredible delivery, you've got to take control. I mean, think of it this way. Think of it this way. The average review that mentions delivery is 1.5 stars lower than that restaurant's uh, score online. Why? Because people have horrible experiences when it becomes no longer the restaurant. They're giving it to not just an uncle, but they're giving it to a babysitter to take care of the food baby. Yeah. And when it gets delivered, end of the day, who knows where they're going in between your restaurant and that guest. But when you can intercept that guest experience, when you take control, when you own that relationship, that's how you make it work. You have got to own that connection to the guest. You can't you can give away a lot of stuff. You can't give away the connection. Those are your guests. That's your relationship. That's your business. So what's the question for the Rift team? The question for you is what are you going to do for delivery in your restaurant? I pose it to Kyle and Jensen and even Troy Hooper, who's the guest host. Don't mess this up. You have a very important seat. What do you do to advise restaurants? How important is delivery? <laughs> the gauntlet has been thrown, Troy. Those two, we're going to show another clip. These two are such pros. They literally just picked up the phone, did it all in one take. We have two different segment clips for you. Uh, they were like Jay and Silent Bob there. Like Sean's face is just like, like spit, like you're spitting, Zach. Keep going. You got this. <laughs> so, uh, I want to address the overarching question of, of why does a restaurant need delivery? And so I, I love history. I always like looking back to be able to look forward. It's, it's something that I think teaches us about patterns, about human behavior, about business model, about the ebbs and flows of capitalism and commerce. We're at a moment right now of fundamental change in the way that we eat as a culture, as a world even, right? The foods that we're eating, the models that we're eating at, the ways that we're bringing food to us. So I look at a time 100 years ago, 100 years ago in the 1920s, we had some similarities. There was a lot of turmoil and opportunity coming out of World War I, right? Then you had prohibition. There was a lot of need for innovation. There was a lot of, of cultural boom when it came to foods. So we think about certain things that are matter of fact in the way we eat now. They were not in existence 100 years ago. So I think about the fast food burger. We've been talking about the burger right? White Castle started in Wichita, Kansas in 1921, revolutionized the burger because before that, everyone thought that the burger was this unsanitary and kind of unappetizing thing. Can you imagine that? Even that smash no, burger cannot. that Kyle's making fun of, we did not appreciate the burger at all. It was a pariah in food, all right? Diners, cafeterias became a model of eating. Again, convenience, quickness that they that they weren't looked down upon because it wasn't hot french cuisine and it wasn't high-end european fine dining this is when italian american cuisine became big chinese american cuisine started to kind of get a little bit of a foothold in the marketplace not just that it was being consumed behind closed doors but in the marketplace that's happening right now we're consuming more different types of food from fried chickens to still burgers to teppanyaki for one and we're looking at different models. So the delivery model is that if you are looking at a business model today and you are not thinking about delivery being core and fundamental to that, I think you're missing out on a huge opportunity. And then you better be so experiential that nobody ever even thinks about delivery for your concept. Because if somebody thinks of your concept and goes, oh, I like them, 
I'm going to get them for delivery and you don't have delivery or you don't have a quality way to deliver that, mm. all of what Troy's talking about with stir fry in a bowl, people will forget about your brand. They just will. That's my my overarching take. What do you guys got? Kyle, what do you think? I mean, I'd, I'd love to hear Troy's take on this, actually, to be honest, because I'm, I'm a little bit... Oh, we're going to get Troy's take. No, I let, let him... Like, I need a little inspo from him because he's in, he's in it. I know where Kyle's at. I know where Kyle's at and why he's struggling. Because... And Jensen, you're a craft chef as well, right? If you if you have a craft concept and you your quality of your food and the freshness of your food and the condition it's in when it gets to the table is incredibly important to you, this is sacrilege, right? This is terrifying. Not every restaurant has to do delivery, but anything, any place that doesn't do delivery is absolutely leaving money on the table, even fine dining. Fine dining. Now, what you deliver does not have to be your entire menu. Don't deliver the whole menu. Don't yeah. deliver the things that are going to wilt and blah, 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 sog yeah. and, and get sticky and get icky. And no, create. The burger bun is the number one complaint for, for inferior food in yeah. delivery right now. So create just take the burger offering. off the bun. Let them build it themselves. That does Come on. succeed. Yeah. Get something that they look. Then that'll be for those people. Right? right. One thing I'm really enjoying is I'm seeing a lot of fine dining steakhouses. There's some in New York, some in Tampa I know of that they are creating, you know, subcategories, sister concepts, right? It's subordinate concepts. So we do steak really well. We do great burgers on our steakhouse menu. We do great. We're going to have a burger concept that's craft and we're going to create it so that it travels well, whether that's a picnic in the park outside of our restaurant on the waterfront in Tampa, or it's, you know, getting in a car and going 20 minutes, uh, create the food and only offer the food's going to travel well and have a good experience when it gets there. That's the way to do delivery, even if you think delivery is not for you. Delivery after labor today, guys. I mean, all these round tables, all these conversations, after the labor struggles people are having, struggling with how to manage this entire delivery ecosystem and the third party relationships and chargeback. This is the second biggest headache that people are dealing with, independent, small chain, all the way up to the big guys. This is this is new, it's still evolving, the models are changing who's got the control who's got the leverage in that relationship keeps it's a tug of war back and forth do you have negotiating power so there's a lot going on in the space yeah it is complicated i empathize with the struggle that everybody's in trying to figure it out for themselves well cameron says deliverable ice cream is a joke you're not you're not hot on the the cold delivery ice cream (laughs) kyle what do you got you got the creative juices flowing now a little at the end of the day like there's like there's so many components that have to be figured out in the delivery process but it's a business right like don't restaurants got to figure out ways to get get the people what they want and yeah i know this i remember this in the restaurant i'm I'm not particularly somebody who enjoys deliver delivery of food unless it's something that isn't going to get soggy or is going to be cheapened by the delivery process but not everybody's me some people don't they just want to eat i don't care this is good enough it's fine it could be cold even i don't care um, it's yeah. You're there's not getting the vodka. What's that? The, you're not uh, getting the the heralded recipe of penne vodka delivered once no. a week. No, no. I mean, look when we had no, restaurant, no. we yeah, were, yeah, if he got penne vodka, vodka, vodka delivered to his house, he'd be out of his tribe forever for life. Chick Parm and the and the aluminum with the cardboard. Oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm on a soft spot for those guys. But yeah, I'll tell you right now. My my, my first restaurant, we refused to deliver. We did not deliver because if you were the – that was right when DoorDash and all these guys, Uber Eats or whatever was the first one that came out. If you were the third, fourth, fifth, sixth stop, that pizza was ice cold and then we were eating it and they were complaining. They didn't like the experience. It wouldn't come in. It's it's a lot. It's a lot to figure out. That's why you have people like Scott Landers at Figure 8 figure, trying to figure out – MIT grad trying to figure out the engineering of of this whole thing because it's it that's what it takes. There's a lot of components to figure out. It's not easy. Not an easy technology is there, guys. That you know, hot boxes, Domino's is going to be probably first to market with it. Um, you see, as you're talking about Kyle, these trucks with the team in the back of the truck driving to the location and yeah. actually finishing the food on site. That's kind of model starting to change in Jersey there. But it, it, you know, it's just a matter of the technology and the systems, the efficiencies finding their way. Um, you know, we've all been ordering Chinese and pizza to go for a long time. Is a pizza better and is Chinese better in the store? Of course. But we got used to it. I think other foods, the technology, I think, is going to help. Um, by the end of the day, just don't, don't, don't put everything on your delivery menu. Don't serve shit that's not. Yeah. Good. Don't if it's not going to make it, not going to. And by the way, have you ever ordered delivery from your own restaurant at home? 
go to your go to your neighbor's right. house, watch the football game, and have them order from your restaurant and see what happens. And you know how many how many owners do that? Very very few. You got you got to be a consumer of your own of your own uh, product to see if if it's making it the right way. I think the big challenge too is it's a it's a whole ecosystem. As I mentioned, there are so many moving parts. There are so many baton handoffs, as I like to call it. Like it's a challenge. Yet everything about a restaurant is a challenge. And what restaurateurs are so great at is figuring out how to overcome those challenges. To be in the restaurant industry is to be a professional problem solver. Half the problems we create for ourselves, that's the job, is to figure out how to problem solve. It's also about figuring out how to pass an experience or an expectation from human to human to human, even if you're using the robots, even if you're delivering and somebody who has no affiliation with your business is a part of that. We saw that video of somebody who was literally in tears because of how hard their day was delivering. And the first instinct for a lot of restaurants are like, suck it up. It's hard. The reality is we need to figure out a way that everybody from Flippy to the person operating that robot, to the people that are delivering the food, to the guest at the end of that experience, to make that a great and memorable, a remarkable memory for people. And the companies and people and businesses that do that are going to succeed. They are going to be the businesses that 100 years ago saw the writing on the wall and said, we need to innovate. We need to do something different. People are crying out for fast food burgers. Lo and behold, we're sitting here talking about McDonald's and, and smash burgers and how ubiquitous hamburgers are. If White Castle in Wichita, Kansas hadn't said something different is happening, there's an opportunity, there's a need, and overcome that challenge, we may not have fast food burgers today. So somebody out there is creating that next White Castle, that next ability to deliver something different, the next diner, the next cafeteria whatever that might be. So, all right, we got another, uh, this is like quasi blooper from these guys. So let's, uh, let's play this next little video. It's going to get us talking about uh, uh, delivering the digital restaurant too. What's up? We are here at the RMDA, which stands for the Restaurant MDA Conference. <laughs> restaurant MDA <laughs> stands for Restaurant Marketing and Delivery Association. There we go. Here talking about delivery. Yes. And marketing and delivering the digital restaurant breaking book delivering the di di delivery is important to restaurants it's, it's so it's so important that all of the top thought leaders in digital hospitality were mentioned in this book yeah i mean like juan george tony smith dan mcfadden oshwin love that guy stephanie Saunders, dustin mares a tool chris comparato chris ceo Camparato. of toast uh, we've got Sean Walchek. I don't know who that is. Rev Ciancio. Yep. I mean, everyone who's everyone. Everyone who's everyone is yeah. in this book. They, Carl Orsborn and Meredith Sandland. This is book number two. You thought book number one was good? This book is even better, primarily because this guy is in the is, he's in the hidden chapters. Hidden. You, it, they're so hidden, <laughs> you have to call me to get them personally. But that's why you get it on Riff. So give Riff. <laughs> those two are gold like i said they did that and then the clip we saw before in literally one take on the phone in front of the ovation booth uh <laughs> great the restaurant mda conference it's perfect <laughs> perfect perfect uh delivering the digital restaurant <clears throat> carl and meredith have have really really shot onto the scene in a big way like challenging our preconceived notion of what a restaurant is what it means to be in the digital space digital hospitality space and so I want to get your guys' take. Troy, what's uh, what's going on with the delivering the digital restaurant? Because I know those are uh, friends. If I'm, not in, if I'm not in book three, Carl, I'm going to be a little upset. Yeah, yeah, I think they were kind of low-key throwing shade at us because yeah. none of the three of us are in this book. Gonna, so anybody who's in it, go fuck yourself. I'm going to earn guys. it. I'm going to do mm. something unique and revolutionary with this concept, Pepper Lunch. Uh, testing begins very soon. So I'm hopefully going to do something that's going to earn the right to be mentioned in yeah, book three. Uh, by the way, they have no plans for book three, I don't think so. Uh, maybe hoping for something that doesn't come about, but I think they're gonna have to, because reality is this is an ongoing- We need to get thing. in this book, if nothing yeah. else. Yeah. Look, if you didn't think delivery is important, 
Sean and, and Zach and everybody's uh, at RMDA on the delivery side there in Salt Lake today. And guess what? Next week is Food on Demand, which is another old delivery-based restaurant uh, conference. So delivery is so important. We've got two conferences two weeks back to back uh, that focus on it. So, uh, you know, the book is you got to get the book. Uh, I was I, I think I was the first guy to order it on Amazon. I tried to be when Carl whispered it that it was available. <laughs> nice. He gave me the day and the time and I ordered it. But uh, both are books number are, one, Troy Hooper. It's a sequel, by the way. Uh, there is a first book. So get that. Uh, the second book is a little bit more of like a workbook and a how to and, and kind of like an instructional manual on how to take the concepts uh, that are evolving today and, get, and, and utilize them. So it's a great it's just a great manual of how to get started and how to uh, think about this in your business. So I would pick up that book for sure. Yeah. I only do books on Audible, and I do a lot of them. Shout out to people who can't read but love to consume <laughs> content. Carl's uh, British uh, voice yep. is very yep. soothing and encouraging as you listen to the Don't original. Don't listen to it when you're sleepy at night. He's got a very... You know? I was, I was driving one time, and I was like, this is a bad idea. I better pull over the side of the road and finish this chapter out for sure. So... Uh, delivering the digital restaurant thoughts on that before we move on Kyle no I think anything look these guys are obviously at the forefront despite not having any of us in, in, the, in the book which Ooh, you know maybe yeah. it's like you know hey what I can't say that can't yeah, say that. Can't I think say that. Kyle's Frenchie needs to be in the book he gets more he gets more leads than I do I can tell you that uh, yeah look I mean I think anything to push the industry forward I think digital is the way to go I'm all about growth concepts so I think anybody who's uh, struggling with that digital like how do, how do i approach all this stuff you know start with the first book and then the second book that's literally the playbook on how to make it happen dig it all right that is delivering delivery diaries what do we call it quick throw that banner up so i don't mess up the title of this segment that i'm pretty sure i named yes delivery diaries yeah. and today presented by ovation so thanks for the the super segment that the uh the guest experience as well which i think is an important aspect that zach continues to push us to talk about 